Hello everyone, welcome to Cobweb's Technologies Tactical Web Intelligence Webinar. During this webinar, we will talk about web intelligence data gathering in the eyes of most investigators and analysts. To get started, I will first introduce six main disciplines of intelligence collection. The first one is human intelligence, which is the collection of information from human sources, such as interviewing witnesses or suspects. Open source intelligence refers to a broad array of information and sources that are generally available, including information obtained from the media, such as newspapers, radio, television, etc. In other words, anything available to the public. Cyber digital network is any information that is collected from the internet and that can't be accessed without credentials. Signals intelligence refers to electronic transmissions that can be collected by ships, planes, ground sites, or satellites. Measurement and signatures intelligence is a relatively little known collection discipline that concerns weapons capabilities and industrial activities. Geospatial intelligence is the analysis and visual representation of security related activities. It is produced through an integration of imagery, imagery intelligence, and geospatial information. As part of the OSINT discipline, in past years a new discipline has developed called WebInt, which stands for Web Intelligence. Web Intelligence gathers information from online sources such as websites, blogs, social networks, and forums. As this may be very time consuming for intelligence analysts, it is now common to use artificial intelligence and advanced information technology to collect and analyze this information. So why is web intelligence important to us? Well, a few reasons. First of all, the rapid increase in illegal activities on the web, whether it's on social media platforms, communications applications, or on the dark web, criminals are now everywhere on the web and taking advantages of its powerful networking abilities to influence global criminal activities. This can be seen by the ISIS terrorist activities spreading on Telegram and the dark sales on the dark web. Another reason why web intelligence is on the rise is because at the end of the day, everyone has some sort of digital footprint. Whether it's a criminal, terrorist, or even a hacker, they all have families and friends, and those are the vulnerabilities. Even if the individual tries to stay as private as possible, most people can still be found online. Finally, another reason web intelligence is critical is the instantaneous access to information that's available on the web. People publish data live as it's happening within seconds. They got responses and shares and other types of engagements. This allows an immediate response, which is extremely valuable when we're talking about intelligence and real operations. So now let's try to understand the advantages of web intelligence. First of all, we have large amount of information, as we said. The internet includes social networks, newspapers, blogs, etc. Endless information that we can use. This is both a blessing and a curse. We can find so much interesting and relevant intelligence. However, it's difficult to filter the relevant information. Next is the insider's view. You can infiltrate forums or groups to get inside information about their activity. For example, if a group is organizing a violent protest, you can track the organization's platform and collect information about their activity. A great advantage is that it's legal. Since the Internet belongs to everyone, we can use it legally for our information collection. Compared to cyber, for example, that could be illegal. Which leads me to the next point, which is cheap and available. The internet is cheap, much cheaper than buying an antenna for SIGINT collection, for example, and it's available to anyone and accessible from almost anywhere in the world. Signing up to social networks is for free, and so are a lot of online data sources. Finally, WebInt has a very low risk. You can search and collect information with no risk of being caught. Compared to HUMANT, for example, where you risk being caught and even risking your own life. Despite the controversy around privacy, hacking, fake news, and all other negative aspects of online presence, the world continues to embrace the internet and social media. 
Global digital growth shows no sign of slowing down, with a million new people around the world joining the online community every day. This growth is clearly fueling social media use, as we can see. And this trend is not only relevant for developed countries. All across the planet, Internet users are growing at a rate of more than 11 new users per second, which results in that impressive total of 1 million new users each year. In most countries, more than half of the population is active on the Internet. Now let's take a minute to understand the Internet a bit more in depth. The Internet has several layers that can be well visualized using an iceberg. Similar to the iceberg, most of the Internet actually hides behind the surface. The surface web only makes up about 4% of the actual Internet and includes everything that's indexed. This means everything search engines have access to, which is accessible to anyone and everyone. Search engines crawl and index everything that doesn't require any credentials. If they can't access it, it's considered a part of the deep web. This makes up the majority of the Internet as most of it is not necessarily accessible to everyone. Inside the deep web, we also have the dark web, which includes much more freedom of speech and privacy than the regular Internet we know. This is a great hub for a lot of illegal activity, which we may find interesting as web investigators. However, we face the challenges of accessing the dark web as it requires different browsers, links and credentials. These days, we can find just about anything on the web, whether it's information about countries, big organizations and companies, including their databases and other information they share with the world. We can also find information about people, whether it's their social media engagement or other online presence. A big portion of information shared on the web is media, whether it's videos on YouTube, series and movies on Netflix, photos that we share with the world, and songs that we download from iTunes. Other than all the great things shared online, there is also a lot of illegal activity that takes place there, whether it's sales of illegal drugs and weapons, whether it's sharing information about fraud and cyber, forums about hacking and different communities that plan cyber attacks together and share leaks. And a new scary phenomenon online is the spread of terrorism. In the past, terrorism was mainly something shared from word of mouth and remained secretive. A new online era has begun, the online spread of terrorism. As terrorists are influencing one another on social media platforms and encrypted communication platforms, which allow secure usage of groups and channels to spread messages. So let's take a minute to understand the extent to which social media is actually expanding. The number of social media users worldwide in 2019 is 3.484 billion and it grows by 9% year on year. In this graph, we see that Facebook is about to reach 2.5 billion users. This is the biggest social media platform that exists today. YouTube and Instagram are picking up as Instagram has rapidly expanded in recent years, taking millennials away from profiles to new trends in the instant era, including features such as a hashtag and stories. When it comes to the type of open source intelligence we can collect, this is where it gets tricky. As social media is a part of the deep web, it's not easily indexed like other data we find when we conduct a Google search. This means that we need to approach each network differently, and the searches have to be performed inside the network and not using external search engines. There is so much potential data out there, but it's not necessarily easy to access, and even once we do access it, it's hard to locate the valuable intelligence, just like a needle in a haystack. We try to overcome these challenges by using different tools to access the information that is out there, and we have to be creative when we do this. Sometimes we can access data as a third-party app or using an API, which is a way to communicate with different platforms to access information. Sometimes search engines can help us, especially search engines which are more specific to the type of information we're interested in. 
Another creative way to access interesting information can be using emulators, which help us get access to mobile applications, also revealing locations data. We also have to keep in mind that information shared on social media has different privacy restrictions, and there is still a lot of information that's visible to the general public. So let's talk a bit about some of the main investigation challenges we face in Webint these days, because these will help us understand what kind of webbing tools I need to overcome them. A big challenge is target profiling. It's hard to find all the relevant data about one person as it is spread all across different layers of the web and requires a lot of research in different sources and using different tools. Another challenge relating to it is social connections. Even if an individual doesn't have too much online presence, once we identify their social connections, we will be able to learn a lot about them as well. Just like they say, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Another challenge is big data extraction. As we mentioned earlier, it's not easy to find the needle in a haystack, but even more, how to analyze all of this information. But there is no doubt the biggest challenge investigators are facing today is dealing with hidden information due to privacy restrictions. Nowadays, as people are starting to understand how powerful data is, they begin taking advantage of it and people are realizing it may not be in their favor. There are many more options to secure information and make it more private than in the past. When we look for a webbing tool, we must use one that overcomes these challenges as much as possible, meaning it will profile targets easily and efficiently, map out their social connections, analyze and extract big data automatically, and get past privacy restrictions as much as possible. To summarize, today we discussed the Web Intelligence Collection discipline and the critical part it takes in the intelligence community to complete the bigger picture. It is crucial to cover all layers of the web and collect information from as many sources as possible. We hope this helped you understand why Webint is crucial these days, and we will be happy to help you in finding the right Webint tool to help suit your needs.